I've got Jeremy calling in. He's our principal timpanist. He's also a timpanist and freelance percussionist in New York City. Thanks for joining me, Jeremy. Sure. Awesome. Glad to be here. Um, so what was a typical work day like for you back before the pandemic? So uh, being a freelance musician, it, every day was slightly different. But most of the time I, you know, would wake up about 8, 830. I would walk my dog, um, kind of look at, you know, if it was earlier in the week, look at uh, what concerts I had coming up, um, do a little bit of music studying. Um, get a workout in and then uh, either go practice or sometimes run to rehearsal um, in the afternoon. Um, I also would fit in, you know, cooking lunch, cooking dinner um, for myself and my girlfriend and making sure that um, everybody was fed or had the ability to be fed and, uh, you know, wake up the next day and do something similar, a little different. That was, you know, basically the bare bones of, of what a day would look like. So what does a day look like now? Um, it feels like Groundhog Day. I wake up about 10, 30, 11, watch a little TV, um, walk the dog. Sometimes uh, I teach um, like FaceTime lessons or Skype mm -hmm. lessons. Um, and, um, you know, little projects working on uh, some social distancing recording um but it's pretty much the same uh my girlfriend and i are both stuck at home so um i also have to work around her schedule and she teaches from home uh all of her classes all day and um so i usually exercise somewhere around the evening time um and then we usually watch tv at night and wake up the next day every day seems to be the same doesn't matter if it's weekend or not yeah <laughs> um so what's something that people might not realize that you'd like them to know about being a professional timpanist so a lot of people don't realize that and and this goes for my colleagues too i'm always usually the first one to the concert hall there's a bit of maintenance that's involved with mm -hmm. dealing with timpani, like making sure that the heads are ringing a true pitch and like making sure that the heads are all tuned up and fine tuning them. Um, set up, always claiming your space because otherwise I would never have enough space. Because <laughs> um, you play a big instrument, you need to make sure you have enough space to do your job and make sure everyone else has enough space to do their job. Um, so I usually get to the concert hall, I would say about an hour or two early. Just wow. It's nice to be there by yourself. You could set up, do what you need to do, warm up a little bit while nobody's around because certainly nobody wants to hear a loud timpani playing. Um, I think one uh, time I was taking an audition during the, um, the uh, Made in Vermont tour and I would get to the hall and practice for about two or three hours before anyone showed up. But Eleanor was there, and I know it drove her crazy. <laughs> so, um, you know, nobody wants to hear loud timpani warming up, um, including myself, but I have to do it. So, um, you know, there's a lot that's involved that, like, getting up to a rehearsal or a concert, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people don't realize. Um, what's the most unusual show you've ever played? So I, I would say, uh, man, the, the weirdest one that I've ever done that I felt actually really uncomfortable. Um, there were two. I used to play for a Korean church uh -huh. and not just any kind of church. It was like a mega church. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I was in college and it was like stadium seating, like 2000 seats, like mega mega church and i found out they were like broadcasting the services in korea so i would meet people that then came to where i went to school at manis or manhattan school of music in the city and they would say oh you play it at um full gospel new york oh yeah i i used to see you all the time on tv in korea <laughs> and they wanted us to like participate in the service and that was a really weird feeling and the other equally weird um i recently played a wedding 
where they wanted us on risers. And I was playing drum set, um, one of my odd goes freelance. Goes great with risers. <laughs> Go, goes great with risers. And they had the whole band on risers, but spread out across the entire um, venue. And it wasn't in, it was a um, uh, Orthodox Jewish wedding. So it wasn't in a temple. It was in like a mega, like, um, wedding center. Uh -huh. So they had like a bunch of different rooms and the room where they had the ceremony, they had like four risers spread out along the, the whole perimeter of the, of the room. And we had like click tracks and it was just very different. It was, it was very strange, a strange feeling to me, but it was, and very unique. It was cool. I had a good, ended up having a good time, but it was very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my last question for you is, um, I don't know whether it's an easy one or a hard one, but what's your favorite Ben and Jerry's flavor? So um, I'm always drawn to like mint chip or some variation. So my favorite actually is mint chocolate cookie. Um, mm -hmm. I rarely find it. Um, and now that um, Ben and Jerry's has actually started making um, non-dairy ice cream. I'm um, slightly lactose intolerant. So uh, it's pretty awesome that like I can eat that and not have any like feeling of bloating or anything. I love it. It's great when I can find it. <laughs> well, good luck finding it so you don't have to choose between suffering and eating ice cream, or I guess suffering and eating ice cream go together when it's the dairy one. Um, on that note... <laughs> But it is worth it. I will say it. it is very well, worth it. It is worth it. Good. As long as it's all worth it, you know, the spread apart riser gigs and the Korean live stream gigs and the dairy ice cream at the end of the day, if it's worth it, you're doing something right, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah. You're still playing music. You know that I think yeah. that is the one thing that I've learned in all of this. If you're playing music and communicating through music, it's worth it.